It was all a game necker. I made a bet with Siji and now our other friends and I won. I'm out of here. I am not Siji so don't come crying to my place or expect me to give you any money. But Owen, you said. Enough. If you fall into a pit once, it's a mistake but if you keep falling into the same trap several times, it's a habit and you are to blame. It seems Siji was right about you. Watch me walk away. My heart is broken. I desperately wanted this relationship to work out. Deal with it. Relationship. What relationship? This was all a game. Nika sits alone, grappling with her recent heartbreaks. Suddenly, a knock on the door. Who is it? I'm not expecting anyone today. Who are you and how did you get in? The door was opened. What? Excuse my manners. I am Prophetess Uche. Your name is Neka, right? Diallo and Arda's eldest child, third year business admin student, series of failed relationships. Need I go on? That's enough. How come you know so much about me? What brings you here? Neka, child of struggles, I am a messenger of the spirits. They've seen your pain, spirits. 1 John 4, when ESV says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. And Exodus 20, 1 to 3 KJV says, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Yes, child. In this land, we hear from God and the spirits that rule over this territory. Your misfortunes are not mere coincidences. You are under a curse, a dark force blocking your path to marital bliss. How do you know all this? The spirits speak to me. Listen carefully, I bring you a solution. The mysterious woman hands over a red cloth to Nika. This holds the key to breaking the curse. Wipe yourself with it before meeting your next love. What guarantee do I have that this will work? Your faith is the key, child. If you truly believe, this cloth will bind your love and break the curse. But there's one condition. What condition? If you believe, by faith, that he's your destined husband, you must perform wifely duties. The cloth ensures the bond remains unbroken. Nika, desperate for a change, nods in reluctant agreement. I'll do whatever it takes. Gotcha. The prophetess smiles sinisterly before fading into the shadows, leaving Nika with the ominous red cloth and a newfound sense of vulnerability. Ladies and gentlemen, let's delve into the truths that unfold in Nika's life. Already, a glaring red flag emerges, for a true prophet or prophetess of God cannot override what is written in God's word. As we embark on this journey, let's turn to the scriptures for guidance. 1 Corinthians 6.18 KJV says, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Here, the Bible explicitly instructs us to flee from fornication, a commandment that stands firm. Nika, in her vulnerability, is being led astray from this divine directive. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves, then, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. In times of confusion, the word of God encourages us to submit to him, that is, obey him, and resist the temptations of the devil. Nika's path, guided by the so-called prophetess, seems to stray from this fundamental principle. 1 John 4, 1 ESV says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. Nika needs to seek the Lord earnestly, pray for discernment, and test the spirits. The encouragement to perform wifely duties and use a red cloth as a spiritual remedy raises serious questions about the authenticity of this prophetess. 
Ultimately, the Bible calls us to obey the Lord at all times. Nika should be seeking God's guidance and strength to overcome her struggles, not succumbing to a path that contradicts his teachings. Proverbs 3, 5-6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. Nicholas' journey should be guided by trust in the Lord, seeking his wisdom, and not by the misleading advice of one who seemingly encourages disobedience. Let us ponder these truths as Nicka stands at the crossroads of her faith. Nicka's apartment, a few months later. Why didn't it work? I followed the instructions. I did everything the so-called prophetess said. Now, she's unreachable. I don't even know where she lives. It's as if she vanished off the face of the earth. I find it hard to believe how naive I was. In my desperation, I accepted a red cloth from that fraudulent prophetess. Since her visit, peace has eluded me, and I'm haunted by terrible nightmares. The man I thought would stay with me not only cheated but also left me for someone else, after consuming a significant amount of my time and resources. Nika sits alone, contemplating the events of the night before. The room is heavy with a sense of disillusionment. As she searches for answers, a cold breeze sweeps through the room. Unbeknownst to Nika, malevolent spirits linger in the shadows, their intentions far darker than she realizes. She thinks we care about her catching a man. Foolish mortal. <laughs> Little does she know, her soul is the real prize. Meanwhile, Nika, disheartened, decides to discard the red cloth, tossing it away with a mix of frustration and confusion. Useless thing. What's wrong with me? Why can't I keep a man? The malevolent spirits watch with malevolence, reveling in her despair. She's questioning herself. Perfect. Doubt is the first step to breaking her connection with the divine. <laughs> we'll do anything to keep her from God. Yes, we'll do whatever it takes to keep her from God. Nika, unaware of the spiritual battle surrounding her, continues to grapple with her perceived failures and the ever-elusive quest for love. A year later. Why me? What have I become? Malevolent spirits linger, feeding on her despair. She's drowning in her sorrow. Perfect. She's forgetting the way to the light. <laughs> Nika, consumed by her insecurities, locks herself indoors, shutting out the world. Why did I listen to that false prophetess? I'm gradually losing everything. My heart is broken. I desperately wanted to get married. The malevolent spirits revel in her self-pity, exploiting her weakened state. She's so entangled in her misery, she can't even see the way out. Soon, she won't even remember how to pray. Days turn into a gloomy blur as Nicholas' mental health deteriorates. Life is so hard. No one cares. Her isolation becomes a breeding ground for darkness as the malevolent spirits tighten their grip. She's forgetting the joy of the Lord. Work is slipping away. She's losing everything. In fact, she used her own words to destroy her life. <laughs> Soon, the world outside her window grows distant, and Nicholas' mind becomes a battleground for the malevolent forces seeking to keep her separated from God. Necker, you've been absent from work too often this year, and your health seems compromised. 
Your pessimism and depression are affecting team morale with your constant negative remarks. If you've allowed yourself to succumb to sorrow, we can't let it drag the rest of us down. You've missed multiple deadlines, and others have had to redo your work. Consequently, we've decided to terminate your employment immediately. I took a chance by hiring you despite your lack of experience, but it's clear now that it was a significant mistake. I believe you should consider counseling and seek external assistance, something beyond what my company can provide. Ada, a woman of faith, senses the spiritual battles waged against her daughter, Nika. With a heavy heart, she turns to fervent prayer. Lord, I feel the darkness surrounding Neka. I bring her before you, deliver her from the evil that has taken hold. Turn this situation around for her good, Lord. Bring light where there's darkness. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Mum, can I stay with you for a while until I get back on my feet again? Sure dear, there's no need to ask. You're always welcome here. What happened dear? I am ashamed to even tell you. However, in the end, I got severely depressed and I lost my job. Losing a job shouldn't be a big deal dear, it's not the end of the world. You lose one job and get another one, or you can start a business with the Lord's help. What is of utmost importance is your relationship with God, and we need to deal with the source of the depression. Yes, mum. Tell me, have you disobeyed the Lord lately? Most of our problems emanate from disobedience. I see. Sensing a divine prompting, Ada and Nika engage in a powerful three-day fast, seeking God's intervention. We cast out all evil, break every unholy soul tie, and declare your blessings upon our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, please forgive me Lord, this time I am sincere in seeking your help, please help me to break free from the things of the world, help me to obey you, help me to forgive myself and others, help me to wait and trust in your timing O oh Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Amen. Mom, I can sense something changing. That's the power of prayer, my child. The Lord is at work. As the three days and nights unfold, the grip of depression begins to loosen its hold on Nika. Mum, I can pray again. I can read my Bible. The spirit of heaviness and depression has left me. God has turned our mourning into dancing, Nika. Rejoice. The heaviness that once clouded Nika's spirit dissipates, replaced by a newfound joy. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Mum. Thank you, Lord. I give you all the praise and glory. In the wake of their shared prayers, a sense of peace settles over Ada's home, triumphing over the darkness that had threatened to engulf Nika's life. A few weeks later... What? Amara? Nika's mindset was slowly transforming, yet she harbored a lingering fear that a man might abandon her if she didn't yield to his demands. Nika, wrestling with her fears, stumbles upon Amara's social media chats. As she scrolls through, she discovers a truth that would reshape her perspective. Amara, still waiting for marriage. I better meet up with Amara. Hey cousin Amara, can we meet up for coffee at our favorite cafe this Saturday at 10 a.m.? Message sent. Amara, it's surprising that you're maintaining abstinence until marriage in your late 30s. Could you share more about how you navigate this commitment? How do you resist temptation and maintain self-control? Neka, my journey of abstinence is deeply rooted in my faith and a commitment to honor God. I believe that what we focus on grows, and by God's grace, I've chosen to prioritize purity. Making a conscious choice and seeking the Lord's help daily has been crucial. Setting boundaries and parameters safeguards not just my physical well-being but also my spiritual and emotional health. I understand the potential consequences of disobedience, such as unwanted pregnancies, soul ties, living in fear, and health risks. My desire to please God outweighs any temporary temptation. 
By staying obedient, I avoid these pitfalls and ensure a path of integrity and God's blessings. For those who may have deviated, seeking forgiveness and choosing a path of purity is always available. God's grace is abundant, and a commitment to obedience can lead to restoration. Let's encourage one another to embrace God's standards and experience the fullness of His blessings. Yes. So yes, I made a choice, with the Lord's help, to keep myself for marriage, not for the man, but for my relationship with God. Amara, I need to really understand. Perhaps, you can explain it to me in layman's terms. Why wait? Why keep yourself for marriage? Neka, it's not about the man. I mean, it's not so much about keeping myself for my future husband, it's about obedience to God. Obeying the Lord brings blessings and saves us from many problems. What other advantages are there to remaining pure? Let me share a few supporting verses with you. Exodus 15 26 KJV says, And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and wilt give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Leviticus 26, 3-4 says, If ye walk in my statutes, and keep my commandments, and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. 1 John 3:22 says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Exodus 20, 5-6 says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. And John 14, 21 says, He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Well, apart from God's favor, purity safeguards our emotional and physical health. It fosters trust and deepens the foundation of a future marriage. Plus, it's a testimony to others of our commitment to Christ. Nika, absorbing the wisdom shared by Amara, begins to envision a different path. I want that. I want to obey and experience those blessings. As Amara imparts more reasons to obey the Lord, Nika's desire for a life aligned with God's principles intensifies, marking the beginning of a transformative journey toward purity and obedience. You can. Prayer is key. Asking the Lord for guidance to walk in obedience is paramount. Personally, I rely on God's grace, recognizing that it's not by my own power. Implementing protective measures is crucial, I avoid situations that could lead to abuse or compromise my commitment to God. I steer clear of drinking, smoking and drugs, I choose my friends wisely, I don't go to certain places, I seek God's guidance in all I do, and I'm cautious about being alone with any man, especially in private settings. Clearly communicating my standards in relationships is vital. Additionally, I refrain from kissing while dating, and I prioritize daily activities like reading the Bible, prayer, and meditation on God's Word. Here are more reasons to obey the Lord. 1. Spiritual Fulfillment Obedience to God's commands leads to a deeper spiritual fulfillment and a sense of purpose. 2. Peace of Mind Following God's principles brings a peace that surpasses understanding, guarding the heart and mind. 3. Divine Guidance. Obedience opens the door to divine guidance. The Lord directs our paths when we trust and follow Him. 4. Protection from harm. God's commands often serve as a protective boundary, shielding us from harm and destructive choices. 5. Harmony in relationships. Obedience fosters healthy relationships, promoting love, respect, and understanding in our interactions with others. 6. Wisdom and Discernment. Through obedience, God grants wisdom and discernment, helping us navigate life's challenges with clarity. 7. Personal Growth Obedience is a catalyst for personal growth and transformation, molding us into individuals of character and integrity. 8. Eternal Rewards 
God promises eternal rewards for those who faithfully follow his commands, transcending the temporal challenges of this life. 9. Strength and Faith Obedience deepens our faith and trust in God, establishing a strong foundation for our relationship with Him. And 10. God's love and approval. Obedience is an expression of our love for God, and in return, we experience His boundless love and approval. Remember, obedience to the Lord is not a burdensome duty but a pathway to abundant life and blessings. It is an expression of our love and gratitude toward the one who created us and desires the best for His children. Right. In John 14 15 the Lord says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. This verse succinctly expresses the idea that genuine love for the Lord is evidenced by a commitment to follow his commandments. True. Thank you Amara for taking the time to explain all of this to me. It's a pleasure. I will keep you in my prayers. May the Lord continue to bless and guide you dear. Thank you, you too. Mother, today I had an interesting conversation with Amara. She's changed my perspective on a very important topic. I am now more confident than ever before that I too can keep myself for marriage. I will be a secondary, maiden. Amara is the type of person that you should hang around with. While she's in the country from overseas, where she's doing her second degree, I suggest her that you learn as much as you can from her before she leaves the country, and see if it's possible for you to join her there. Yes mother, I will be meeting her at their family mansion on Tuesday. I cannot go there when the rest of Amara's family is at home because of the stigma. Aunt Afaniya and Uncle Kwame and their sons will not allow me to enter the house. True, for as long as you aren't going there to cause trouble, sin or do any harm to Amara and her family, I support you. Go my dear and learn from Amara. The Lord has blessed that young woman with a lot of knowledge, wisdom and understanding. She's a brilliant student as well. Plus, she is a devout Christian who comes from a wealthy and influential family. Yes, thank you mother. Nika, grappling with societal pressures and the fear of losing a man, seeks guidance from Amara. Amara, is it even possible for a man to marry without, you know, before marriage? Men nowadays expect it, and if you don't comply, they move on. Neka, our allegiance is to God, not men. What if you never get married? There's nothing wrong with that. Focus on building yourself, and the right man will come in God's time. But Amara, it's so hard. Men today want what they want, and if you don't give in, they find someone who will. Obedience to the Lord is key. There are still great and God-fearing men willing to wait for marriage. Be the kind of woman equally God-fearing and obedient. The Lord reserves his best sons for his best daughters. Do you really think there are men like that? Absolutely. Trust in God's timing and focus on being the woman he designed you to be. The right man will appreciate your commitment to obedience. In addition, I have faith in God. Nothing is impossible with God. As Amara encourages Nika to prioritize her relationship with God, a glimmer of hope begins to shine the light on Nika's perspective on love and relationships. Nika, feeling the weight of societal expectations, raises a poignant concern with Amara. Amara, we're approaching 40, and we're still not married. Sometimes, it's tempting to just have a child out of wedlock and forget about getting married. Neka, what's wrong with remaining single and childless? The crucial thing is obedience to the Lord. If he desires you to have children, he can make it happen even at 90, just like Sarah in the Bible. Bringing a child into the world under the right circumstances is vital. Marriage provides a stable foundation, should anything happen to you, the child will have a father and a supportive extended family. But Amara, isn't it tough being unmarried and childless at our age? Obedience is the key, Neka. Marriage is important before having babies. A child born in holy matrimony earns respect, and in case of any adversity, they have a strong support system. Trust in God's plan, if he wills it, it will happen. Obedience paves the way for his blessings. Nika. Contemplating Amara's words, 
begins to see the value in aligning her desires with God's plan, finding solace in the assurance of obedience. You're right. Thanks, cousin. It's a pleasure. A few years later, Nick attended a church conference in another country, finds herself in a serendipitous encounter with Dyke, pronounced as BK, whom she believes to be the answer to her prayers. As their relationship blossoms, Nick grapples with a difficult decision. Finally, Dika seems like the man I've been praying for. I can't mess this up. Hi, I'm Dika. I've noticed you here quite often. Mind if we grab coffee sometime? Um, sure, I'd love that. As their relationship deepens, Nika faces a dilemma, whether to reveal the dark secret of her father's malevolence. I can't let Dika know about my father's wickedness. I'll keep it a secret, pretend my dad doesn't exist. You look more beautiful than ever. Thank you. Naka, I read your message and I agree that we should wait until marriage. That is, if we decide to take the next step. I must say that I truly admire and I have the highest respect for a woman who obeys the Lord. Thank you, it's all by God's grace. Fantastic. For the sake of our relationship, I'll keep this hidden. Diallo, my wizard of a father, will remain a secret. Little does Nika know, this decision to hide her father's malevolence will pose challenges and unveil unforeseen consequences in the course of her journey with Dyke. As Nika navigates the intricate web of her past, present, and future, she encounters both the divine and the deceptive forces that shape her destiny. From the clutches of malevolent spirits to the solace of a mother's fervent prayers, Nickel's story is a testament to the transformative power of faith and obedience. Her encounter with Amara serves as a turning point, challenging societal norms and prompting the re-evaluation of priorities. The wisdom imparted by Amara becomes a guiding light, illuminating the path towards obedience and God's perfect plan. The arrival of VK, a beacon of hope in the bustling city, introduces a new chapter in Nika's life. However, the decision to conceal her father's malevolence casts a shadow over the budding relationship. As Nika grapples with this secret, she teeters on the precipice of choices that could either fortify or fracture her journey. In the intricate tapestry of Nika's life, themes of obedience, redemption, and the unyielding love of a mother weave together. The story is a reminder that even in the face of darkness, there is a path to light, and obedience to the divine can lead to a redemption that transcends earthly struggles. As Nichols' journey unfolds, the audience is left to ponder the complexities of faith, the consequences of hidden truths, and the enduring power of God's grace. The resolution of her story will unveil whether Nicola chooses a path of transparency and true redemption or succumbs to the weight of her secrets. Some of the lessons learned in this episode are 1. Obedience to God The importance of obedience to God's commandments is a recurring theme. It is highlighted as a key factor in navigating life's challenges and experiencing His blessings. 2. Transparency and truth The consequences of hiding the truth about one's past are evident. Nika's decision to conceal her father's malevolence raises questions about the potential pitfalls of secrecy in relationships. 3. Faith in God's timing. The narrative emphasizes the significance of trusting in God's timing. Both Amara and Nick's journeys underscore the idea that God's plan unfolds at the perfect moment. 4. The power of prayer. Ada's unwavering faith and fervent prayers serve as a source of strength and transformation. The story highlights the profound impact of consistent prayer in overcoming challenges. 5. Choosing righteous paths, the characters face the temptation to compromise their values in the pursuit of love and companionship. Amara's steadfast commitment to remaining pure before marriage is a reminder of the value of choosing righteous paths. 6. Redemption and growth, Nichols' journey symbolizes the potential for redemption and growth, even in the face of past mistakes. The story suggests that a commitment to obedience and faith can lead to transformative change. 7. The weight of secrecy, the consequences of keeping significant secrets are explored, raising awareness about the potential impact on relationships and personal well-being. 8. 
focus on spiritual well-being, the narrative encourages a focus on spiritual well-being over societal expectations. It challenges the notion that certain milestones, such as marriage or having children, define one's worth. 9. Resilience and Adversity Nichols struggles in moments of despair to pick the resilience needed to overcome adversity. The story suggests that even in the darkest times, there is a potential for renewal and hope. And 10. Choosing God's Best The concept that God reserves His best for those who remain obedient and faithful is a central lesson. It encourages individuals to trust in God's plan and not settle for less than His best. Thank you for watching this episode of Beyond the Stigma. Watch out for the next episode, and if you haven't subscribed, we recommend doing so to receive notifications about upcoming content. Before we conclude, here are some verses from the King James Version of the Holy Bible for you to reflect upon. Matthew 17 19 and 21 says, Then came the disciples to Jesus apart, and said, Why could not we cast him out? Hope eat this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. 1 John 5, 3 says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Proverbs 3, 6 says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Proverbs 28, 13 says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. If a science 425 says, Wherefore putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 says, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Isaiah 40, 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, and not be weary. And they shall walk, and not faint. Philippians 4, 6-7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. James 5, 16 says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Proverbs 4 26-27 says, Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left, remove thy foot from evil. 1 Corinthians 6 18 says, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. 2 Corinthians 5 17 says, Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Luke 12, 2-3 says, For there is nothing covered, that shall not be revealed, neither hid, that shall not be known. Therefore whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear and closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Colossians 3, 2 says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And 1 Corinthians 2, 9 says, But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts, acknowledging your sovereignty over our lives. We lift up the challenges and struggles portrayed in this episode, recognizing that you are the ultimate source of wisdom, strength, and redemption. O Lord, grant us the grace of obedience. Help us to earnestly seek your commandments and walk in obedience to your will. Strengthen our hearts to follow your paths trusting that your ways are higher than our ways. Lord, unveil the power of transparency and truth. May we find the courage to bring our secrets into the light, recognizing that your mercy and grace abound. 
help us to walk in honesty and authenticity, for you are the God of truth. Father, instill in us an unwavering faith in your timing. Grant us patience to wait upon you, knowing that your timing is perfect. Strengthen our hearts to trust in your plans, even when they differ from our own desires. Lord, teach us the power of prayer. May our prayers be fervent and effectual, seeking your guidance and intervention in every aspect of our lives. Help us to find solace and strength in the communication we share with you. Father, guide us in choosing righteous paths. Grant us discernment to navigate the complexities of life with integrity. May our choices reflect your righteousness, and may we flee from temptations that lead us astray. Lord, lead us on a journey of redemption and growth. Transform our hearts and minds, renewing us daily. May the mistakes of the past become stepping stones toward a brighter future in your love and grace. Heavenly Father, help us bear the weight of transparency and openness. Guide us in revealing the truths that need to be shared, recognizing that your light dispels darkness. May our relationships be built on honesty, trust, and genuine connection. Lord, remind us to focus on spiritual well-being. May our hearts be set on seeking your kingdom first, understanding that earthly milestones do not define our worth. Help us find fulfillment in our relationship with you. Father, grant us resilience in adversity. In moments of despair, may your strength be our refuge. Help us to rise above challenges with a spirit of resilience, knowing that in you, we are more than conquerors. Lord, lead us to choose your best for our lives. Help us surrender our desires and plans to your divine will. May we trust in your goodness, believing that you have prepared something beautiful for those who love you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.